on a more vanity level of things, what do you recommend for uh, teeth whitening? Because I, I uh, get this. So your dentist recommends teeth whitening with in-office bleaching. Yeah, you know, that's probably not what you would want to recommend. Uh, but yes, definitely. To be honest, I would recommend rather if you do any sort of bleaching, let the professionals do it. Okay. Don't do the tooth whitening stuff that you can buy over the counter, especially not the tooth whitening toothpaste. Because like I said before, there's stuff in it that files down the top layer of your teeth. And what co- what it will cause is that the top layer will stain faster. Also, mm-hmm. you get more sensitive teeth. Mm-hmm. So you have more often you have yellow teeth that leads to more often using that stuff until you file it completely down, mm-hmm. um, which is really bad for teeth se- sensitivity and anything. Um, and if you go to a dentist who recommends in-office bleaching or at least home office bleaching, both of it is fine because they at least know what to do. And if you combine that in-office bleaching or home office bleaching, home bleaching with the right nutrition and lifestyle, meaning you prepared your body before to have strong teeth that are not sensitive, because obviously teeth whitening for a little bit makes your teeth sensitive. But if you have vitamin D3 levels in check, you have enough minerals to compensate and everything, you don't even have a problem there. So you can do that. And what about that sensitive teeth? So I get that question. So I have sensitive teeth. Uh, should I use Sensodyne? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I actually don't know about Sensodyne, uh, but probably is a good marketing. Probably. Uh, again, it is. as far as I remember, Sensodyne is just a general t- toothpaste. Um, yeah. No, usually sensitive teeth or tooth decay or, or gum disease or bleeding gums are not, not a chemical deficiency. It is more often a deficiency of nutrients and lack of building blocks. So maybe maybe you can resort to using a sensor dune or let's say a GC tooth mousse or let's say maybe even a chlorhexidine if you have like an extreme reading of anaerobic bacteria for let's say one, two weeks as an initial strategy, but at the same time work again on key things like eating the right foods, skipping all that processed crap, eating nutrient-dense foods, especially animal proteins or protein at least, two gram per kilogram. Get your vitamin D3 levels checked. Support your body with vitamin D3, vitamin K2, magnesium, minerals, all these things that has been shown scientifically to build teeth and bones and nice gums. When we talk about gums, a lot of people say, so I have, my gums are bleeding. Does that mean I need to, my dentist says I need to floss more. <laughs> this is something where I personally also sometimes get attacked from actual functional dentists because, mm. because obviously out of context, if I say I don't floss and I don't recommend flossing, it can come across a little bit weird. So <laughs> let me explain. Please. So, Bleeding gums is, again, the norm. We all have tooth decay and bleeding gums. But in nature, we have teeth hard as stone and very pinkish, non-bleeding gums. My gums never bleed. Never. But if I personally use a floss and I have no dental repair done, my teeth are perfectly healthy besides the orthodontics, I actually can really get through with the, with that Um with that um, flossing. So I snap through and then I have bleeding gums. Mm -hmm. So if you are healthy and everything is fine, there's no need for you to brush in in between the teeth. It is not correct that interdental tooth decay comes from not flossing. It is a sign of a nutritional deficiency. Obviously, what it is correct, where it is correct, again, if you have massive periodontitis, a lot of dental repair, stuff that sticks in there all the time and your gums are bleeding all the time, yes, then maybe you need to floss until that's finished, until that's gone, until you back to neutral and normal and natural. But then afterwards, a long-term strategy, I don't use any floss. And I, that's not nasty at all. There is nothing sticking. So if, for example, there would be a piece of meat in between my teeth, then obviously I would use something like a toothpick or maybe even a floss to get it out. But it rarely happens, to be honest. And so isn't it I- also... I- yeah. Yeah, isn't it also true that most floss, conventional floss, is coated with a toxic yeah. substance to make it slide, and that comes yeah. off? So the, the the glide, yeah, I think there's BPA on it and like estrogenic yeah. compounds, xeno, xenoestrogens, stuff that you also don't want to have into your mouth. In your mouth. So again, you see, the goal is use that stuff maybe strategically at the beginning, 
But the long-term strategy is all about your lifestyle. I know it sounds super boring, but it's actually the way to get teeth hard as stone. <laughs>